Hi again, this is Lee James, part of the Catalyst for Care project, and this is the third of three videos explaining how you can set up your own community micro enterprise with my support. So in this video, I'll tie together some of the things that we looked at in videos one and two and outline the whole journey of setting up a micro enterprise. So this is the journey, and as you can see, it's made up of four key steps. And the first of those steps is you and your service idea. So the first thing you need to think about is exactly what service you'd like to provide. Will you provide only support or can you also offer some aspects of personal care? Remember from video two that you can only do this for up to four customers at one time. You then need to think about what are your skills and interests that you can utilize. So perhaps you've had great experience and have good skills in working with people living with dementia and this could be a clear focus of your service. If you're providing support or home help, then what are the special skills and interests that you can offer to add value to your service and to make it stand out? So perhaps it's around pets or gardening or art therapy or mindfulness. Whatever it is, when you're designing your service, you need to think about what will give you purpose and enjoyment in your work and what will make your service stand out and be valuable to customers. For inspiration, you can find hundreds of micro enterprises offering all sorts of care and support from all over the UK on the website directory smallgoodstuff.co.uk. Now, when you've got a good idea of what your service will look like, you need to ask yourself the very important question, is there a pay and demand for what I'm going to offer in my local area? If not, then quite simply, your business idea isn't going to make any money. Now we know that in Pembrokeshire that we've got an aging population and we know generally that there's a big need out there for support to help people to stay living independently in their own homes. And that's why the Catalyst for Care project has come about. But if you're gonna start a business, then you need to be confident that there's a pay and demand for what you're offering in the area that you're prepared to travel to. So to do this, you can ask people in your community about your idea. Maybe the local pharmacy and shops can provide a good insight as well as colleagues at work and any professional contacts you might have. Linked to this, it's also good to think about what current networks and contacts you have that could help to promote your service or signpost customers to you in the near future. Finally, the best way of finding out if there's a pay and demand for your service is to test it. So you need to think practically how you can do this. So will you test your service at evenings and weekends or could you go part time with your current job? Or if you're going to end your current employment to test it full time, financially, will you be OK for, say, three months if you have little income coming in whilst you build up your customer base? So there's lots to think about here, but it's good to take your time and to get this planning stage right. Typically, I'll sit down with people face to face, to discuss all of this and then create a little action plan for them to go away with and work on. So when you're ready, we can arrange a meeting to discuss all of this together. After this, when you're happy that you've got a clear picture of what your service will offer, you're confident that there's a pay and demand for it locally, and you've got an idea of how you might test it, the next step is to sort out your portfolio. So this is basically the paperwork that you'll need to get done. So you'll need to register as a business with the HMRC. So this is usually as a sole trader or a limited business, and you can do this online. As a business, you'll need to get public liability insurance to cover you for any accidents. And this is about £70 a year. Also, if you're using a car, you'll need to get business use to put onto your car insurance. You'll need to get a DBS check. And once you're on the online system, this is about £13 a year. And you'll need to create a service agreement contract that you use with each customer. Now I can sit down with you to show you some examples and explain everything that it needs to include. So it'll be things like agreeing activities to be carried out, payments and holiday arrangements. And finally, we'll sit down to go through the Catalyst for Care quality standards, ensuring that your service is safe and high quality. And if you're happy to sign up to them, then you can be added to our directory of enterprises, which will be used by various professionals in Pembrokeshire, like district nurses, community connectors and social workers. And this brings us nicely on to step three and marketing. So as I just mentioned, members of the public and professionals will be able to find your service on the Catalyst for Care directory. 
It's also good to create a flyer for your service so that you can leave at community venues and hand out to professionals when you meet them. And I can help you to create one of these using a free online poster making website. It's really good to create a Facebook page for both members of the public and professionals to find out a bit more about your service. And whilst word of mouth is still the best form of promotion in Pembrokeshire, having a digital presence is still really important. You can use your Facebook page to collect testimonials from customers, which is a really great way to show the quality of your service. People can get in touch with you directly through the messaging function. And if you like, you can pay to boost your posts so they get seen by a targeted audience. Now, if Facebook isn't your thing, then I can sit down with you to help you to get up to speed of all of this. Twitter is a useful tool to connect with professionals. And again, I can show you how this works if you're not familiar with it. And networking events are great for meeting professionals that can signpost and refer customers to you. For example, the community connectors at Paths run great speed networking events. And I'll also be setting up meet the micro events to connect with professionals in Pembrokeshire. So when I talk about connecting with professionals, these include community connectors who help people to connect with community groups, activities and services to improve their well-being. Social workers who may be able to refer customers to you via direct payments and Pivot, which is a programme to support people with the safe transition from hospital back to home. And there's other professionals such as district nurses and OTs that might also be able to signpost customers to you. So hopefully, after you've done these things, you should start to connect with customers and get an increase in flow of inquiries as your reputation grows. From here, as your business becomes more established, you can start to think about how you might develop your service responding to your customers' compliments and complaints. So you may want to expand the services you offer in response to what people are asking for. And this may require some additional training. Now through the project Facebook page at Catalyst for Care, I'll be signposting various useful training, workshops and online advice, such as the council's um, social care training, which is free for micro enterprises, free business Wales workshops and social media marketing tips. As I mentioned in video two, I'll be facilitating local network meetings so micro enterprises in different parts of Pembrokeshire can get together to support each other. So this might be clubbing together to purchase cheaper training or just sharing their experiences on what's working well and what isn't. Now down the line, if you're seeing a really big demand for your service, you may want to consider employing other people. Even as a sole trader, you'll be able to do this and Pembrokeshire employment schemes like Workways will be able to help. However, this is a really big decision as you'll need to ensure that any employees carry out their work to the same standard and quality as you do, which will require some supervision and management. Now, I'm sure that the idea of employing people will seem like light years away, but I hope that this has given you a good idea of the journey of setting up a micro enterprise. So the first step is to have a think about the questions in the you slide in your service, then get in touch with me for an initial chat. From here, we'll create an action plan together, which you can work on at your own pace, and I'll be on hand if you've got any questions or need any help. So thanks for listening and hope to speak to you soon.